Well, uh, listen, guys, it's just gone four, so it's, I'm going to hand over in a minute to our to our main our main man, Mr. Gallo. But just good afternoon to all of our well, and welcome to everybody, all of the, the, the guests and, and black local travel um, clients who have joined us here this glorious Friday afternoon and towards the end of April for this first black local travel. Um, Zoom, Zoom car. So welcome all. Hope you're all safe and well. Obviously, with the, the times that we're living in are very unnatural and very uncertain at the moment. Um, but hey, oh, that's that's the care we've got given. And then obviously, our thoughts goes out with the with, with the the ones who people who've lost their lives and their families, sympathies with their families so at these grave signs. But sadly, that's the way it is. And obviously, our uh, Thanks and gratitude to the, the healthcare workers that, that are working tirelessly to, to make sure um, the, 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 right, the, the right support and, and care gets, gets needed where it's, where it's done and also to get the things back ready. So, but life goes on, as they say, and sadly, no sport, no live sport at the moment, but at least this afternoon, we're trying to at least present you with a little bit of a, a live chat anyway. Um, to, to see us through for the next half or so. And in, in so doing, I'm going to hand you over to ex England, the wonderfully talented, gifted captain, left handed batsman captain. And in the last, in the last few years, he's, he's made this, this, this zone this zone his own as a presenter of Sky Sports. It's David Gower. Oh, love it. Hi, that was a hell of a wrap for you there, man. I've got to say, sad, sadly, that's all, got, that's all we've got time for this afternoon. But thank you very much indeed to everyone for joining, especially um, Jason and Zach. And we're very good to have you guys with us. At a time, of course, where, as Gladys has just about pointed out, things are a bit unusual. Um, so we've got, for instance, just, just to clarify, we've got people listening in who are supporters of Black Oval, who travelled with Black Oval before. Uh, we've had questions submitted by various journalists who are also wondering what on earth we can fill the time with <laughs> for the next year and a half until this all gets sorted out. Um, so we'll try and get through a, a mixture of chats and questions and the whole thing and, and see how it goes. All very relaxed. But anyway, Jason and Zach, first of all, I mean, we've had a question actually in anyway. I might as well ask the same thing. I would have asked the same thing. How have you been coping with lockdown and what have you been doing? Jason, come to you first. Um, well, I've actually used it to lose a bit of timber. Uh, obviously, being in Pakistan for uh, I, was, I was over there for four odd weeks. Um, the diet wasn't wasn't the best, so I'm able to come back now and and kind of switch on a bit. But to be honest, just spending as much time with my family, um, yeah, which is pretty cool. I was meant to be going straight from Pakistan to the IPL, so it was going to be a, a hell of a long stint away from the family. Um, but yeah, that's what I've just been kind of sticking to my gym program trying to stay fit and and that it's just it's it's weird kind of completely separating myself away from the game it's it's mm. something i've never kind of had to do before so it's yeah i'm just trying to find stupid little jobs around the house as well which is um so so where have you been gymming at home then yeah but i've been i mean been doing little programs and stuff that the our trainer can send us like hit sessions and yeah, I got a few bits of gym equipment at home, some weights and that stuff. And other than that, we're allowed to go out for a run and stuff. So I'll be doing. Yeah, I mean, I I found a very good little thing to do the other day as a sort of a sort of sort of workout, which is what I call the uh, the bottle bank squat thrust, where you put four cases of empty bottles on the floor, squat down, pick two up at a time, put them in the bottle bank, down again and up. And um, I was a bit embarrassed because there were about there were a couple of other people in the queue, as it were, and they had a small bag of half a dozen bottles. I had four cases, about sixty bottles. So <laughs> uh, some things never change. Um, Zach, how's it been for you? Yeah, much the same. I mean, when you're playing and training all the time, the last thing you want to do really is go to the gym and you kind of drag yourself along. But um, the way the situation is at the moment, I'm quite looking forward to those hours or two in the in the gym or going for a run to, to keep myself busy. So. Um, yeah, definitely trying to keep fit and keep in shape so we're ready to go when we're called upon again. But, um, you know, working on my stroke and the, on the carpet as well, got to get the, got to get the handicap down. So uh, it's a great time for that. And, um, you know, just bits and bobs, like Jason says, around the house and catching up on things that you'd never usually do um, when you're busy playing in the season and, you know, in the winter. So uh, you're catching up with family and 
doing things like this with old friends from school and that. So, um, you know, it's not it's not where I want to be, but uh, it's not the end of the world either. I mean, the news today for you both, obviously, which I'm sure you've seen, is that uh, there's a further extension to the delay of any chance of any cricket this summer. Um, talk about maybe the start of July. I mean, one of the questions we had in was basically, from, actually from Simon, my colleague, ex-colleague at the Sunday Times, Simon Wilde, saying, yeah, how, long, how, how, would, how long would you need, do you reckon, to get, as it were, cricket? It's one thing doing gym work, but of course, you're getting out of the field is very different. How long would you need to prepare? I mean, if they said suddenly, you know, July the 1st, you can suddenly start playing cricket, how long would you need? That is such a good question. One I've never had to know the answer to. Um, but to be, I'm pretty fortunate as well. Um, well, I say fortunate, but a lot of my game revolves around how I'm feeling, um, how my confidence is, middling the ball. Mm -hmm. I'm not too overindulgent on my, my technique. Uh, so I can kind of just feel, I'm a field player, so I can kind of come in. But then again, everything just feels off. When I've had a, a time away with an injury when I had my hamstring injury I was away from the game not hitting for I reckon it was I reckon I wasn't hitting for two three weeks max and I came back and 70 mile an hour I felt like 90 mile an hour and I was absolutely bricking it and then I mean it took maybe I reckon five set five net sessions and then I was I was sweet again but yeah and that was only three weeks away so this is going to be it's going to be very difficult. Well, I mean, Jason, you're in a flat in London somewhere there. Um, Zach, you are, I think, in Bromley. Uh, with judging by the background there and the study there, a bit more space. Have you got a net in the garden? Uh, I, we have a tennis court and uh, I used to have a bowling machine. But I've moved down to um, Canterbury now. Well, when this isn't on, I, I've got a flat down in Canterbury on the ground. So there was no need for the bowling machine anymore. So we gave it to the local club. Uh, which I'm regretting right about now. It'd have been uh, it'd have been quite nice, but um, but uh, yeah. So I mean, I've got I've got you know my old man might have to test his shoulder out in a, in a couple of days' time to keep me uh, keep me in nick maybe. But no, I there's nothing really you can do. Um, but on that, I mean, if it, if they said we were playing, I suppose like Jason said, it'd be, it'd be I don't know, a few days, a few nets for the batsman. But I, I suppose the problem would be with the bowlers uh, getting bowling fit it would be it would probably take a few weeks. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'm I'm more than happy to play July second if they said do that. But uh, I mean, obviously, that that wouldn't be Gladys. Possible. Gladys, you're listening there, but carefully. Hang on, was that, was that a quiet glass or something I saw there? Well, you're just shuffling right something right. unobtrusive into view. It's it's Friday afternoon after all, Gal. You know, Wait, it's, it's been a hot day. I'm, trust I me, I want a dog. I want a dog for an hour this afternoon. So you know. <laughs> Yeah. I'm back in your mate. It's four o'clock. Yeah, well, it's it's always six o'clock somewhere in the world. Um, <laughs> hate to interrupt your early evening drinking, especially with all those stolen bats behind you. Um, well, as, from a bowler's point of view, then just just to sort of finish off that question, from a bowler's point of view, uh, you know, it could be any moment that some, some someone says, right, we can start the season. Um, what do you reckon about the the time it takes to get yourself up to the right sort of level? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure like the like these guys will be saying you, you the, the drills you, know, you can't bolt anyone out. But if you were if you were like as a young boy, you go back to what you used to do as a kid. To be honest, you bowl, bowl, get a tennis ball, and and, and get go through your action against the gar garage door, you know, and, and get little drills. I think exercise is, is obviously key, keeping you keeping your body strong and and, and subtle. And that sort of stuff, but you, you just got to find. You just have to find ways of, of obviously keeping keeping yourself in, somehow in the groove and mm -hmm. and just somehow in, in tune with what you need to do. Yeah, I mean, one of the things is one of the things emerging very obviously to all people is that with the lack of time left in the summer, as it were, even you know, even with an optimistic view of it, there's going to have to be huge rearrangement. The hundred has been much discussed the last few days as to whether or not it should actually take place at all this year, and it most likely or Certainly might not. Um, yeah, it's a question. Have you guys given much thought to what sort of season you might end up with? Oh, uh, I'll go. Um, not really. I think I, I'm just looking forward to playing our first game. I think mm -hmm. whatever gets thrown our way, it would be nice to play some cricket this summer. I think um, the biggest heartbreak would be that there's no cricket on home soil for this for this summer. And I mean, who knows what's going to happen. Um, the way things are going seems to be getting a little bit better, but still on on a on the downward path. So I haven't given much thought. I think 
I can only assume that they're going to give priority to the blast. I think the T20 stuff will will be because they make it makes a lot of money for the counties um, mm. and the championship, I, I assume. But I mean, I wouldn't know. It's way above my pay <laughs> grade to be answering actually, those. Actually, that's the but, question um, that's coming here from Keith Keith Swerby, um, an old friend of mine from from the church. says he says uh, Keith asks, do you think that one part of the the crowded county game will be permanently lost. And if so, which one? I don't think one will be permanently lost. Um, I think they're going to have to make arrangements to either shorten competitions or make things a bit more, a bit spicier for cramming everything into the three-month period, even less than three months. Um, but yeah, I can I can only say from my point of view, I, I don't really care what I'm playing. I just want to be out there and playing. But I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say something's going to be permanently lost. Yeah. But already we've seen, obviously, we just say to, to Zach there that um, well, we would have been what, into the third week of the county championship program, which is, which is going to see a lot of those games already being, you know, at least half the, at the start, even at the start of, say, the middle of July, say, for instance, they would have lost at least half, half of the county championship game. Does that make it then, if you had to play eight, seven, eight county championship games, does that make it a credible, credible co competition? Zach? I think they're talking about doing a regional competition now if it's such a short season. So, like, Kent would play Surrey, Essex, Sussex. That's the, uh, the, the uh, weekend theory. Tough, that, mate. I'm lucky. You're right. Just can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I think <laughs> it would be, <laughs> be tough to um, to play, you know, half, half a championship season like that. So, um, I think that's if, if we did play four-day cricket, which obviously, like Jason said, hopefully we, we, we play all forms. But, um, yeah, if we did, I think it would look something like that. Just squeeze it in and then obviously play the blast to, to get the money in. Yeah, just, just mean, just the season. What, what about them? And the, the other thing that was floated the last couple of days as well, I've seen today, is if we, as it were, run out of time in the English summer, Abu Dhabi have apparently offered their facilities um, for basically the early part of the winter. So you could conceivably, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a left field idea. Um, yeah. How do you feel about playing sort of back-to-back -back games, spending sort of a month and a half in Abu Dhabi. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good spot. Um, but yeah, I think if you're going to play some competitive cricket, you're going to play some competitive cricket. I think no matter where you're playing, um, I would assume that the boys would just be chomping at the bit to play. Um, doesn't matter where it would be, but that, that is a left field idea, but it sounds like, it sounds like a... Sounds like a good one, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're a, you're a seasoned traveller, Jason. I mean, you, I mean, actually, just before, before I move on, I mean, I, I was looking looking nah. up all these things the other day. <laughs> and if you look at your Crick Info profile, it just could take about an hour and a half. And, you know, teams played for England, Bengal Tigers, Chittagong Kings, Delhi Capitals, Delhi Daredevils, England Development, England Lions, Gujarat Lions, Lahore Colanders, Calendars. Uh, Nelson Mandela Bay Giants, Kata Gladiators, Surrey, Surrey Second, Sydney Sixers, Sydney Thunder, uh, Silhouette Sixers. Is there anyone you haven't played for yet? <laughs> but yeah, no. There, there's a few, few, few more to check off, mate. There's a few more to check off. Um, well, if there's any vacancies, give me a shout. I might have a go. Um, <laughs> Zach, I'm a bit disappointed in your record. I mean, I've got, I'm sorry about this. You know, it's, just, this it's very disappointing. You know, teams played for England. Congratulations. Fantastic. Kent. Kent seconds, will you have to do that at some stage? Kent under 13s, Kent under 14s. And for some reason, Crick Info thinks you played at yeah, Lancashire I did as well. well. I played 40 tests as well, John Crawley. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a big mistake to make in there. I mean, he's from Manchester and now he's like 50, isn't he? Uh, well, he'll be, I think he's probably past 50 by now, yeah. Uh, very nice lad, John, and a very nice player too. Lessons. Very nice player. I mean, magic through mid wicket. Um, well, okay. Well, 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 it depends. Actually, here's the here's the question. Then, do you want your average or his average? Actually, I've no idea what his average is. A hundred percent his. <laughs> right. I'll take, I'll bite your hand off for his average. Yeah. Uh, you're, yeah you're, you're, I'll, bite, I'll bite your hand off for that many test matches as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well now, now you're both up for this game. Um, there is a question from another old friend, John Etheridge, at the Sun. Um, Directed at Zach, saying, new test player, just trying to establish yourself in the new team. How worried are you this interruption might stall your international career? Because, uh, first of all, there is no international cricket to play, of course. Then everyone's fighting for places. I mean, the, uh, with the two of you here, I mean, 
Zach, your winter went well. Jason, your, I mean, we all know about your one-day stuff, a fantastic World Cup, World Cup last year. So many highlights, but the test career um, has been a bit of a problem. So, in a sense, you might be competing. I mean, Jason, first of all, coming to you, I mean, you, you still have ambitions to try and find a way back into a test side, I assume. Yeah, 100%. Um, I've, yeah, I worked pretty hard to kind of get myself into contention for it. Um, and kind of, unfortunately, unfortunately, the spot was to open, um, mm. which obviously isn't my prefer preferred suit. Um, but I tried to learn on the job, try to, try to kind of go in there with high on confidence. It, it didn't matter that it was a red ball. I was still high on confidence because of the World Cup and, and that, but it was just, uh, it was a different ball game. It was very tough, struggled to learn on my feet. Um, yeah, it was just very, very difficult to be honest. Um, and then obviously getting dropped for that final test was just, just a bit of a hammer blow. I think mentally it was just yeah. like, well, well, worked so hard to get into the, that position. And then five, five tests later, it's like, it's gone. Um, it is but, tough. It is tough for sure. Uh, 100%, 100%, 100% I'm going to be pushing. I want to push and get myself back into that test side. Um, mm. But yeah, like I said, probably, probably not as an opener. But it's some, somewhere in the middle, if a slot comes up if, for grabs. If, it, if it's up for grabs, up for grabs. But yeah, I won't stop, I won't stop trying. So from your point of view, um, competition is good in the top three. Um, and I suppose there are only, you know, only so many places available. Dom, who you were opening with in South Africa with hundreds, I mean, he looks as though he's settled in very nicely. Uh, you, I'm assuming, are very happy with your progress in South Africa. Uh, but Rory Burns was the incumbent, and no doubt he will be very keen to get his place back. Absolutely. Like, well, Rory had an, had an unbelievable start to his career so far with, you know, quite some quite difficult series, really. I mean, that series that Jason played, in with uh, with Rory in that, that I mean doesn't get any harder than that I don't think uh, you know and he's got a lot of runs in that series and you know he's well worth his place when he's when he's fit again so um, but no qualms with, with that and you know Dom had a great series in South Africa as well so like I said I'm just going to keep trying to improve and you know obviously I'm desperate to play for England so you know um, I'm going to be working my way and hopefully overtaking them um, but at the moment like you say they've, they've had great starts to their career and they're, they're well worth their place so um you know, we'll see how it all turns out when this comes back. But, um, yeah, I'm just going to keep trying and pushing. And hopefully when I get the chance again, I'll, I'll take it and, and, and be inside for a while. Well, obviously, we wish you both well with all those ambitions uh, as and when the game unlocks again. The, um, I mean, the other side of it is one, one, actually one question for me here is when you come into an England squad nowadays, what does that feel like? I mean, Jason, you've had experience with the one-day squad yeah, uh, before the test matches last year, Zach, for you, it's basically yeah. in this last winter where you've been inducted into the same thing. So, how, how does that system work nowadays? Do you want to so go? Uh, well, I got um, exactly. well, I got the call from uh, Ed Smith at the last day of the season that I'd be in the squad, uh, and then there's all that um, details and stuff, um, feeding, uh, feeding you with information about what you need and what's going to be required on the tour, and then it's pretty much via text, and then you see everyone at the airport. Um, mm. I was very lucky that um, there's a great group of guys uh, on that first tour in New Zealand and you know Joe, Joe Root and uh, Ben Stokes are trying very hard to create um, a very good culture around the group um, and so they were very good there's quite a few youngsters in the squad which also helped um, but they were extremely and all the senior players really were extremely good to, to me and the other young guys to make us feel welcome so you know, I was pretty nervous about the the whole thing going into it, but I mean, it was it was very easy in the end. I mean, they made us feel very welcome, and you know, everyone everyone knew who came along was was made to feel the same way. So I mean, it's it looks good for the future if if that culture continues because it was like I said, it was very easy. And do you enjoy the the whole thing about being away for you know, a certain period of time, longest period of time? Yeah, no, I loved it. I mean. Um, Christmas Day was the only day, you know, it was, I'd have liked to have been back home. But uh, other than that, I mean, I loved every, every day of it. Um, so, you know, hopefully I can go on many more tours. It was the, you know, best, well, that month of South Africa was the best month of cricket I've definitely, I've had ever, on and off the field. So, um, yeah, hopefully more of that to come. Uh, Jason, coming back to you, I mean, all those teams we mentioned just now, you've obviously spent a lot of time in a lot of countries and a lot of time away from home. Have you... Have you had time, though, at the same time? Because these schedules are so busy nowadays. Have you had time to sort of get out and about, to look into the cultures, to find out more about the places you've been to? Um, 
Yeah, I have actually. Um, um, we touched on it the other day, but not as much as you did in your time. But we mm. were under a bit more kind of strict, uh, kind of strict instructions. We were allowed out with as long as we're in a certain amount of people in our group. Um, but when I go on the T20 tours, I mean, we always, as in like uh, Pakistan, Bangladesh, all the other the T20 franchise stuff. I try and get out as much as possible and, and see the culture. Um, we have Mark Saxby in our, in our team with the England boys. When we were in Sri Lanka, most days we're going to a different coffee shop or he's always trying to get us out. And um, But yeah, we, I probably don't make, I don't know, I probably don't make enough use out of it, to be honest. I probably kind of sit back and watch a bit of TV in my hotel room a bit too much than go out and see the culture. But yeah. I mean, it, it, it is, it's, it's, I mean, it's something which has changed because all the schedules are very different. There is a greater intensity, I think, now than there was when Gladys and I were you know, relaxing in the first week in Brisbane before an Ashes tour. Uh, with all the usual things being said, you know, this is a serious tour. We've got, you know, the Ashes to regain or keep wherever it was at the time. Um, yeah. I mean, we hope to start as we mean to carry on, you know, on a really fully, fully professional basis. And at the end of that first week in Brisbane in 1986, uh, there was, I think, a very strong lecture or two, was there not, about uh, behaviour in and around the hotel and uh, around Brisbane, which was not exactly making full use of the culture, but was enjoying the town, put it that way. Well, well we, we, I mean, and obviously we were always told that the senior players, of which obviously you were, you were very much in that category. You, you have to, you had to take, you know, obviously you, you, your notes from the senior players. So you had people like, like. I.T. Bowen, um, David Garrett, Alan Lamb, Phil, Phil Edmonds, even the captain Mike Gatton. I mean, I mean those. You know, so we did have a, a good array of, of socialites, should we say, to take to take note of. And there were one or two. I remember one one occasion when we when we went up to um, to Bunbury up in the north northeast of Queensland. And Bunbury is famous. You know, the most famous thing it's, it's famous for is rum. Make sugar cane, sugar cane to make rum. And Gal, you're not quite a, a rum drinker, are you? You're more of fine wine. And, and well, I, yeah, true. I, I do like a glass of wine, and so, but I spent a lot of time in the West Indies, and there's a lot of rum out there. And the one mistake you mentioned the name. The one mistake I made um, up in Queensland there was um, putting myself next to Ian Botham at the bar. <laughs> um, because there is, you know, and everyone in the cricketing world knows this, he has a capacity, even nowadays, which is substantially greater than any other living being. Um, so going head to head, one for one with him was a very, very, very bad at plan. At the Lord Mayor's reception? Uh, yes, what was it, the Salter Over. I remember it, I remember the first bit very well, I remember nothing about the end of it. You are like to navigate it. I'd like anyway, to see Sorry, luckily I couldn't hear any of that. No, I'd like to see the, um, those boys navigate themselves around the 12 o'clock curfew. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, there was actually... <laughs> I'm, not sure, I'm not sure they would have uh, stuck to it. Uh, we had, no, I can tell you, Ian, that same tour, 86-7, which luckily we can say it all worked out very well because it turned out to be a very successful tour. But the night before the first test match, was team dinner in the hotel in Brisbane. Um, we had Gat as captain, Mickey Stewart on his first tour as England team manager. We'd done all the usual things, you know, a couple of glasses of red and all the rest of it, team talk, tactics, you name it. Mickey got up thinking he could make an impression on his first night in, in the position, saying, I'd like to think that everyone is now going to go to bed, get a good night's rest, and we'll be fresh for the morning. You can imagine IT both of them. Uh, Beefy basically said, sort of, oh, no, I'm not going to go to bed. I'm not going to stare at the ceiling for the next three hours before I go to sleep. So uh, probably three o'clock in the morning, we left the pink parrot and went to bed. It was, and from then on, things went really well. So there is a, um, yes, it's, it's a bit different. Let's, let's put it aside. It's, it's a bit. <laughs> anyway, given that, given that we are uh, representing Black Opal here today, as a reminder for you all, um, as a travel company specializing in sports travel, um, you know, one of the problems we have, of course, is trying to anticipate when we'll be able to take people to watch some more cricket. It's meant to be India this coming winter, of course. Um, I mean, Zach, for you, that's obviously a potential target. Um, what do you know about India? Have you been to India before? Do you know much about it? Have you ever experienced Indian cricket out there? Yeah, I've been to, uh, I've been to India a few times, uh, just for a week or a week or two training. Uh, mm -hmm. Never to play out there. But um, 
from what I've seen of it. It's uh, also obviously a beautiful, uh, beautiful country. I went to um, Vishakapatnam. I'm not sure there'll be a test match there, but uh, that was a beautiful place. And um, you know, the people are very friendly there. And you know, it's, I'm sure there's plenty to do. I mean, I'm not sure about the golf. It might be too hot, but um, I'll definitely give it a shot for sure. Best place in the world to play cricket, man, India. Yeah, Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. No bouncing those pitches out there, Jason. You just yeah. camp on the door. Yeah. Camp on that front foot and just whack it, man. <laughs> Actually, Jason, there's a question here from uh, from um, Adrian Price. And Adrian, um, the, oh, no, sorry, Freddie Price. I'm Freddie Price. Oh, okay, yeah. His name is on the third team, Surrey player. And he loves watching you bat. Yeah, so have you got any tips for him? Good man, Freddie. Uh, tips, tips, tips. Get your basics to batting. Get them in order. Do them as well as you can, and then, uh, and then after you've done all that, then you can just whack it out the park. Um, <laughs> Power hitting. Just hit it hard. Just watch that ball hit it hard. Especially at your age, man. Just enjoy it. Enjoy it. Make lots of friends along the way, um, and then yeah, just uh, never. No fear of failure. As well, I think that's a massive thing I've learned as well over the last few years. Don't, don't, don't be scared. Don't be scared to get out. Don't be scared of what people are going to say. Just, uh, just enjoy yourself and enjoy the journey. That's actually that's a, that's a great Sorry, point. Because, um, the, I mean, look at looking for instance, just going back to the the one day game. And um, for the last whatever it is, four or five years now under Owen Morgan, the whole thing has transformed extraordinarily. I mean, you've been very much awesome. at the forefront of that yourself. That that idea of not fearing failure. Yeah, uh, you know, fearless cricket. I mean, how hard is it actually to really get your mind around that? Um, I think it's a switch inside of you. I think um, I think everyone has an element of it. Even when we're turning up to to the semi-finals in the World Cup, I think everyone had that element of "whoa, this is this is scary." But everyone was so pumped up that the fact that we got ourselves to that semi-final that the element of fear of failure was not really there. Um, but I think everyone's got a little bit of fear in them, but it's just the moment you step over that rope, the moment you're facing that ball, it's not even what, it's not, not being conscious of all that sort of rubbish, all just having positive thoughts in your mind about what you want to achieve. Going to bed the night before, positive thoughts about what you want to achieve the following day, waking up in the morning, having breakfast, what you want to achieve, where you yeah. want to hit the ball, where your boundary, like you're just looking at positives. Um, moments I've times where I failed, I've, I've gone to bed the night before, struggled the night before, thinking this guy could get me out this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. And the next day, what happens? It's yeah, it's uh, I mean, it's, the, the, the other side of that because I mean, obviously, with the World Cup win under your belts, something which none of us ever well, not close, I guess, but not that close, never achieved before. I mean, that was a fantastic, great day at Lords, yeah. And the one day game seems to be in such good shape. Um, but the, the positive cricket element in the test matches, I mean, there are times that we've watched a very good England team over the last few years get it slightly wrong by being almost too positive. There's a question, I mean, what I say, all sorts of questions came. This one's from Alistair Simonson at the cricket, uh, cricketworld.com saying, why do you feel the new crop of England batsmen are struggling to bat time in test cricket? Well, it's not, a, it's not always true, but there have certainly been times where you know, the defences have been a little bit loose. Um, you know, it, it's the ability not just to be positive, surely, but to be able to adapt to a given situation, which, Zach, is something which you will need to be well aware of. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think um, England did it quite well this, this winter, actually, adapting. And not mm. necessarily, it's not about batting slowly, but um, I suppose you did bat a bit slower on, on occasion, but it's just about reading the situation. Yeah. Um, and I think that's just that just comes with confidence and experience, I, I suppose. But I will say that I, I do feel I think Alistair Cook said it when he retired. I think the last couple of years, um, I think the, the pitchers have done a lot more than they have, you know, maybe in the ten years before that. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I mean, it's it's you know, uh, there's a lot of people saying but that time and that, and it's um, and I agree with them that you got to be adaptable and play all sorts of games. But I, you know, I've played in several games in county cricket when I've walked off thinking well that was I've been pleased with 10 there got a lovely little two down to third man and snicked off the next ball um so you know it's it, it is it's definitely favoring the bowlers at the moment or the last couple of years have I would say anyway but that might just be a batsman talking I don't know um sort of question for both of you I just thought about this with 
um, a different caption for the one day side and the test side, you know, obviously Owen Morgan and Joe Root take, take your pick which in order. Um, how, how interesting is that or how difficult is that? How easy is that? Um, how does that work for everyone? For those that are involved maybe in both squads, um, how does that feel working that way? I think, I think it's actually really helped Ruti um, mm. as well. Obviously, Morgs has had a lot of success um, during, since that last World Cup um, to this World Cup now. So he had a huge amount of success. So when, when Ruti took over, he had a great person to talk to about team culture. Yeah. Um, and I think Ruti, you know, he's a, he's a great leader. He's great to, great to speak with. He's, he's incredibly knowledgeable about the game. Um, but to create that culture, I think he is quite fortunate that he had someone like Morgs. Mm. And he's also got Justin Stokes there, who are obviously chopping and changing formats as well. Mm. So um, I don't think, I think it's just, I think it's worked perfectly for them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I've been ever so impressed with Owen Morgan, um, the way he is basically changed the culture of the one day side. Um, and he has that sort of sort of steely look in his eyes that um, I'd imagine can be quite frightening on a bad day, but you know, it gives you a bit of confidence, a lot of confidence. You know, a man like that trusts you, backs you. Yeah. That's an important moment. 100%. I mean, it's, it's the honesty as well. It's the open honesty. You walk into the change room and if, if you piss someone off, you're going to know about it. It doesn't matter who it is, whether it's the quietest person or the loudest person in the room. Mm. You've always got someone, if you have done something wrong, telling you you've done that. Um, and there's no, there's no shying away from that. I think all the boys are honest with each other, open, honest, and more, more so than anyone. Um, yeah. And that really promotes that, that team kind of culture. I think if you had people talking behind people's backs and stuff like that, that's when things fall apart. But fortunately, the team I've been a part of with England, is, there's not even ever been one element of that. which is. I mean, one, one of the things, again, going back to the same sort of topic with the, uh, the likelihood of a very, very short season. Yeah. Um, one of the other ideas, and there's a fellow called Ed here, Crarup, who says... Uh, would you be open to England's test and ODI sides playing on the same day? Because that's, that's been also formulated that you know, because of the lack of time, you want to try and get some test matches in and the one-day games in, you might have to have two different sides, two completely different sides playing at the same time. And then would you say, would you say the likes of, I mean, Stokesy, Joss, Joffre, Wokesy, what do, they, what do they take president? Do they take test match? Well, they, is it their choice? It's, it's a good point. I mean, that, I mean, that's obviously, yeah, these, these, are, these are all the ramifications. I mean, I would say off the top of my head that if you have a test series, for instance, which is counting towards the test championship, yeah. then your best side in the test side, I mean, I still, I still have to say I'm afraid that test cricket for me is always going to be, you're going to take pride, you know, pride of place. That always comes first. So you put your Correct. best side in the test yeah. side. Get your points for the World Test Championship. Um, it yeah. creates spaces in the ODI side. If you're playing, for instance, Australia, for instance, as an example, um, with no, with not the same context, then you can still put on a game. You can still have the spectacle. You still have some you know, people like yourself as uh, a top one-day player in the world. Yeah, you're still on good. So, um, no, I, I agree. Especially that Test Championship now up and running. I think that's that's. I think it can happen. I don't see yeah. why not. I think um, it would also be it'll be great for people to get opportunities in the England side. Then once all the all the kind of the test boys are up playing for for the test team, then yeah, that could, opens up more spots yeah. in the one day team, and yeah, I think that's healthy. But um, uh, it's a, bit a shame if it has to come down to that. But it is what it is. Yeah. When the other so I said, the other question which has just come up on, again related to all this, obviously, is from John Shepherd, who said, "Glad it's John Shepherd." So glad this is you know, it's to you. I guess this is John Shepherd, uh, and if it's the John Shepherd that played for Kent all those years ago, John, how very nice to hear to hear from you. If it's another one, well, John, thanks for the question. Um, but the, the question is this, how do the guys feel about playing cricket behind closed doors? <laughs> well, <laughs> <play> cricket. <laughs> yeah. well, at least you're playing cricket, yeah. But it's, as we know, it's a, it's a very different atmosphere if you walk out there and there's no one. Well, I suppose it's the old adage of obviously county cricket. I mean, generally, you know, if you go to a county cricket game, you, the crowds aren't big. Um, mm. per se, but it's, but it's, it's per, as a player, and back in those days, it's, it's where you, it's, you position yourself in a way of where you want to be. I, and for someone like myself, back in those days, where you would play against the proverbial man and his, and his dog watching in the, in the, in the half-empty stadiums, not even half-empty stadiums, mm -hmm. you always protected yourself in an environment of, 
I, I want to play in a, at Lawrence and the full house there and a, and a finals there. So you're always projecting yourself, and I'm sure that will probably come down to the same as, as when, 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 if you do have to play in in empty stadiums, um, if, if, it's, if it's England playing against the West Indies, say, there this summer, and it, it'll still be a test match. It won't be, and I'm sure the players will still get themselves in a, because sometimes even when you're playing in, a, in, a full, in full, full crowds, you get, you're so involved in, and you're so concentrated. Sometimes you don't even notice the crowd, to be honest. Yeah, we had, so just before I flew back from Pakistan, I had, I think it was two, one or two games out there that was completely shut out from the public. And it was the weirdest feeling ever. It, you, you did, I did struggle to kind of make it feel like an actual competitive fixture. It was from obviously being surrounded by people, crowd cheering and everything. And that kind of pumps you up and gets you to a level where you can play your best to kind of, literally silence when the bowl is running in it's bizarre um so yeah obviously to play cricket no matter what would be would be nice but it is a very strange feeling uh, zach good news for you um andrew miller has uh, put something on the the chat board here saying crick info profile duly amended hey that out. So, i'm quite annoyed about that actually i was quite happy to be john crawley for the day or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lost a thousand odd test runs there. That's a shame. Anyway, not to worry. I think you'll be. I think you'll be all right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still plenty of time to add them back in again later. Don't worry about that. Um, but he also asked, actually, while you're at it, I mean, how how would you feel about the Abu Dhabi proposal? Um, you know, given that Sri Lanka tour, for instance, was abandoned um, very summarily and for all the right reasons, of course. You know, how would you feel about being someone like Abu Dhabi, which actually is probably safer than most, to be honest. But it's it's. Yeah, it, I suppose wherever you go now. That worry is going to linger, isn't it? Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, I'd have no class about playing Abu Dhabi. I mean, as long as everyone, um, you know, there was, a, there was a safe way of doing it without spreading the virus. But I mean, the if, it, if we were playing in Abu Dhabi, it would mean that we hadn't obviously got enough cricket in the summer. So I'm sure everyone would be chomping at the bit to play a bit more cricket. Um, so I mean, I can only see that being the, the scenario if we only have, I don't know, a month or a month and a half of, of the season. So... I'll be more than happy to play in Abu Dhabi or, or anywhere for that matter. Yeah, yeah. Um, going back to the youth, question from Maria, the lovely Maria O'Donoghue. Hey, Maria. Um, nice to hear from her. Um, what tips can you give young cricketers to keep active in this time of lockdown, basically? Get your mum and dad out of the house and throw balls to you all day. Tell them to throw balls at you all day. Uh, I think just messing around, finding some stupid drills to do, getting, get, I'll tell you what, get a nice big can of spray paint or paint and just paint on the side of your house a big target and you can practice your fielding and stuff like that. That's a good idea. Um, yeah, just yeah, messing well, around with the back well, ball again. If you go, you don't ball, 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 ball. Stump. If a stump, get a stump, a tennis ball, and you just practice playing with one stump in, in and picking your picking your targets as well, and keep you know, just give you give your targets to focus on. Yeah, yeah. I was bored the other day actually, and I was just banging a tennis ball up against a, a wall, to see how many I could do. That was uh, it entertained me for about an hour. So I mean, um, I'm sure it entertained the, the young lad as well. So. I've got a, yeah, mate, I'm exactly the same. I'm so bored now. Like I've got a bat downstairs and a bat upstairs, and every time I walk up the stairs, I pick it up, play a few shadow shots, put it down. Walk downstairs, play a few shadow shots, put it down. Like, what's going on? <laughs> What's going on? I'm telling you what. I'm good golf club. Yeah, golf. play a bit of golf. Make sure you don't use real golf balls, though. <laughs> outside only. That, that of course, is the great Don Bradman's tactic, wasn't it? A stump and a golf ball. Stump and a golf ball, yeah. There you go. So, Zach, you have to upgrade yourself from tennis ball to golf ball. I've so, tried it. I can't do it. <laughs> it's so hard, mate. It has to be a myth. It has to be it a myth. To be. It's so difficult, man. <laughs> We'll, we'll get him on the line. Um, um, right, more questions. Obviously, we're going to run out of time at some stage. This one's from Andy Jordan Smith. Uh, it says, he's, I'm a left arm orthodox spin bowler currently playing in the Kent age groups. I'm being told it's good to have, uh, well, good to be in any team based. What form of the game do you think that would suit, uh, sorry, do you, do you think would suit me most? T20, ODI, or Test? I mean, that's actually almost an impossible question to answer until you've seen someone play. But it, is, it highlights one of the issues nowadays. If you're a young man 
you know, playing good cricket at school maybe, or for the club, and you're coming through the system, coming through the age groups, and you're heading for county cricket. Do you need a plan as to which part of the game you need to aim at first, or you just take it all as it comes? I think you take it all as it comes. I mean, um, when, we're, when you're playing age cricket, I mean, uh, for me, I, the only cricket we played from the age of 11 to 18 was 50 over cricket. Um, you know, I think that's, I actually still think that's the best format. I mean, the most important format for me would be the, the championship, the long format, and obviously the, the most fun might be the T20, but I think that my, you know, being put on the back burner in the county game, but I mean, I think it's such a good format because it's, you know, it tests every part of the game. The bowlers can, you know, get a few wickets early doors and then, but the batsman can still bat for a long while and then, you know, try those, that, those kind of T20 shots at the end. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think it's, I think it's the only game that, that, that you know, creates quite a rounded cricketer. Um, so, you know, hopefully we'll get more 50 over cricket back at some stage, but I, I don't see how that's possible. But yeah, I, I'd say, I'd say 50 over for a young kid. Try everything. I mean, look at myself. I, I played Warwickshire schoolboys as a batsman or spinner. And then, you know, <laughs> I don't know what happened to the batting. Got to the shoulders from alligator, eh? Big shoulders. When you're young, you just, you just try everything. You just don't know what part of the game is going to develop. Some overtakes the other. So it's best to just play, play, play wherever you can, where you can get a game. Yeah. Um, ben Atwell has messaged in after that conversation about our tour of 86-7 in Australia saying, could you and would you, Beefy, Lammy, Robin Smith and all the rest of it, have survived today? Would you have been allowed to behave that way? Brackets presume not. And would you have adapted? Well, I suppose the honest answer is yes, we would have had to adapt. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been playing. Um, I mean, that's, I mean, I think actually, in all seriousness, people nowadays, and I'm assuming, again, we talk to the, the guys who are current, if you're coming up through a school system now into, into a county system at, say, age 16, 17, 18, in the way that's approached nowadays must be ever so different to the way it was you know, 30, 40 years ago. And therefore, you learn all these things. I mean, you have the um, capacity to look at the analytics. Um, you'll have the training techniques. You'll have the diets, all the things that were not even looked at 30, 40 years ago. I mean, there must be so much thrown at you from a really early age. Well, even 10 years ago, I think, I think even when, cause when I was starting off... Um, well, say when I was 16 at club cricket and stuff, it was still a case of a couple of the few of the lads going out the night before, turning up a bit dusty and just dusting off their boots and cracking on um, yeah. and working twice as hard. Um, same was the same when I st first started at Surrey, you know, before training sessions or whatever, going out the night before, turning up and doing extra shuttles because you know you had to. A um, few drinks before the game was, wasn't was unheard of. Um, and I, I feel like in the last kind of five, six, maybe a bit longer, maybe seven years, that shift has changed massively and you've seen the progression of, of where we're at, I think. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, I think um, it's changed completely. I think just in that short amount of time, I think, because when I started, that culture was still very right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, and on that note, there's a question here from from um, Ashley Doney Burpees and on the Cricket Day Cricketers doing the video analysis forms. I think part of what you guys do. So you said, can we expect a lot of changes to techniques um, to emerge post COVID? Zach, do you, do you, would you be looking at you looking at your review your, how you play? Uh, you know, I'm constantly thinking about certain things, but um, and you know, it's that, but. <laughs> I, I'm always, I'm a little bit, um, you know, wary of change for me. You know, I'm, I'm, I like to tinker maybe a little bit, but definitely, definitely not big changes. Um, I've, I've had, I've done big changes before, and um, they haven't worked for me. So I, I tend to try and keep it quite simple now. Um, so for me, I won't be changing anything technically, but I, but I, I couldn't speak for everyone else. I'm sure, like you say, it's a great time to look back at some old footage, and and maybe if you if you want to change a few bits now, might be a, a decent time to do it. So. Um, so we'll have to see. I mean, there'll be there'll be a few sledges early season. Well, when we get back to playing, when someone's got a new technique, and there'll be someone will be getting stuck into them about the old the COVID the COVID technique change. But um, but no, we'll, right, have we'll have we might have different techniques, but the bowlers will be bowling ten mile an hour slower. So that's all right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think there's enough video analysis around YouTube and everything like that that the guys are able to still stay in tune with their game, watch themselves back, see how they're getting on, and 
and actually remind themselves that they can still play cricket. Um, I think that's the that's the main thing. I mean, it's it's weird to think of strapping your pads on and walking back out there. But for me personally, when I was younger, I tinkered way too much. Um, didn't find my game out until until kind of nowish, like a few years ago. Um, so no, I won't be changing it at all. I think I'll go back to what works and and try and try and perfect that really. Here's a question here from Murray Lay, uh, my mate Murray. I mean, clicking him, he says um, he's watched the the test or that or the test, which is that Oz, the thing the the Aussie boys did on Amazon. Yeah. 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 Did you guys find it? And if you had a chance to pick, you know, they had the they had mentors like Ricky Ponting and Steve Waugh involved. So that's Murray answers. If you have if you had a chance to pick a mentor's brain, whose who, whose brain would you like to get inside to know how that person played and operated? Yeah, that's a very, very good question. I've been so lucky to play at Surrey with likes of Hashi Mamla, Sangakara, Ponting, Graham Smith, all these guys. So to be honest, out of that list, I think you just go through the overseas players at Surrey and just kind of go, that's actually pretty, pretty impressive. And speaking to them from a young age was absolutely incredible. But one now, I think it's, it's too hard to put a name on it because they all offer such different things. And recently, did you not have a, Viv Richards, was he not involved? Viv, Viv was in Pakistan. He was, he was awesome. Do you know, he was good with the whole, like, oh, so I want to say lifestyle, but that's, that's, it's not really lifestyle. It's more the kind of the mental side of getting away from the game and being around the game and then switching back on in the game. I think he was incredible to speak to about that. Um, oh, it should, yeah. I've, had, I've got too much of a list, to be honest, but <laughs> what about you? My hero going up was always Ricky Ponting. Sorry, Joe. On that, on that uh, answer alone, why hasn't Surrey won more competitions then? All those, <laughs> all that talent you've got there. Uh, I don't know. I don't right. know, mate. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Zach. Back, yeah, back to you on this mental thing. <laughs> um, I would pick probably Ricky Ponting. He was always my hero growing up, and I just thought he's an unbelievable player. Um, mm. So I'd go with him. I always wanted to be quite a small batsman, actually, but I'm, unfortunately, I'm six foot six now. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> my, days of, my days of copying Ricky Ponting are gone. But um, <laughs> but no, I'd, yeah, I'd have to. I'd love to talk to him about the game. He's he's an unbelievable player. He's, he's a very good analyst, actually, Rick. He's um, yeah. he's a very good guy. Uh, very changed. Actually, this is, I, I love the sort of the Ponting story because he's when he was eighteen, nineteen, he was a wild child. Uh, and got himself into all sorts of strife in Hobart and places, which is not easy. Um, and he was, you know, he's developed into a major figure in the game. Obviously, his career was outstanding. Um, but when we, when I've worked with him in commentary box, he's a very good analyst, very, very good, you know, with people. So, I mean, he, I think he'll be a very good man to talk to. He's, um, he's, yeah, for sure. There's, there's another little question here as well, actually, just one of those ones that sort of comes out from... Think, sorry, Gal, I think my wife's shouting at me. Hold on two seconds. Okay, now go for it. I'll, well, we've still got Zach, don't worry. <laughs> it's unusual for people oh, to look at the game, but... <laughs> <laughs> Everything all right? It's all good. It's all good. I wasn't being shouted at for once. <laughs> uh, this is why I'm doing it, to avoid being shouted at for at least an hour. <laughs> and I can, can you carry on, please? <laughs> There was, uh, there was a question here somewhere. Hang on a second. Who, you know, who would you like to open the bat? You know, look back through history. I'm, I've, I've, I've lost it, but someone was asking, if you had a choice, someone to open the batting with, or just bat with in general, depending on where you are batting, who would you love to bat with? Zach, you go first. Oh, Viv Richards would have to be, I reckon. Just mm. to, I'd love to know what he said in between overs. I don't, like, it can't have been anything about Coolest him. customer. Coolest customer. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm with you, I reckon. After yeah. spending all the time with him, I reckon I'm with you. Just because America's, I went back and watched loads of footage of him when I was in Pakistan. I was just in awe, like YouTube clips after YouTube clips. I was just like, this guy was an absolute jet. And how relaxed he was, nonchalant, cap on, chewing gum, just. Mm -hmm. he, yeah. he, he, owned the, he owned the place. He owned it, mate. He owned just, it. Just the 22 yard strip. He, he actually owned the, the, owned the crowd and he let you know what, what was about Vim. I mean, I bought him. Sandy had to board him a few times. Yeah, but he, he he let you know he was coming for you. you know? <laughs> he would look at you, and, you know, really menacingly, and you know. But, but actually, what he would also do if you bowl well to him, he would actually say to you things like, "Hey man, you're bowling well today this morning. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to have a good peep at you." 
and that's what we back over your head sort of thing. That's sort of thing. <laughs> Love that confidence. That's what I'm talking about. That's awesome. I uh, know he. I, I can. I can admit that from the the viewpoint of an opposing captain, um, he was awesome. I mean, absolutely awesome. I mean, I, I hadn't seen anyone as brutal as that, um, pretty much ever. Uh, and it, it, it was. I suppose in that same era, though, you had the two Richards. You had Viv playing international cricket, who was the best at the time, and you had Barry uh, opening innings for Hampshire because, of course, he couldn't play international cricket as a South African who was in a very different style. I mean, I'd say you know, very much in the same bracket in terms of quality and the ability. I mean, one of the things I remember is going down to Australia for the first time when Packer was on. So my first experience of Australia was 77, playing in Perth, Claremont Cot, and watching all this World Series cricket. So then when they came to Perth, I remember watching Barry up against Imran on the, the trotting track at Gloucester Park opposite the Wacker. And actually they had a bloody good pitch there. I mean, it was a great pitch, but a small ground. And of course, the ball's disappearing everywhere, but the quality of the cricket was outstanding. So in fact, a lot of those guys, I think, when they look back at World Series, say that that was some of the best cricket, if not the best cricket they played because of the circumstances. But anyway, Viv, good choice. I have to say, very, very good choice. Um, gentlemen, I think, um, shall we look at the clock and say that's been a really good hour. Um, Jason and Zach, glad, thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much indeed for spending the time. Jason, you know, just reassure your wife, you, know, you will be back <laughs> available to make the team. Actually, actually, one question for Zach from, for Zach, from um, Zach from Lammy, Mike, Michael Lamb. Oh, I'm here we go. Well. He wants to know, do you think you'll ever hit a driver off the tee in your golf career? No chance, no one yet a free with 300 yards. Why do you need a driver? Ah, uh, <laughs> tell him that. Do you reckon he'll never? Hit a, uh, do you reckon he'll ever not hit a slice off the tee? Enjoy your holiday. Yeah, it's awesome, mate. Right. Well, look. As I say, um, thank you very much indeed, all of you, for for taking part. Thanks to all the people who've logged in and listened and and offered us questions. We couldn't obviously answer all of them. Um, I've changed my background just to remind you that Black Opal is indeed a travel company. Um, we're all hoping there will be places to go to. Uh, soon, the coming winter in India, for instance, is of course still scheduled, and there's an Ashes tour in a couple of years' time. Um, uh, but anyway, this is the view from my back garden with the palm trees swaying in the breeze. And when I've said goodbye to you all, I'll be going for a swim. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Okay. Cheers, all.